When working with the input section of a financial model, there are quite a few things you can do to ensure that the model is usable and as safe as possible. So just looking at this model here, there's a couple of things. So as you can see, we've clearly identified the input area, not only with keeping it in one area, but you'll see it's very clear that the light blue cells are the cells that require inputs. As mentioned previously, rather use light colors as it's easier to print with them and we prefer if you fill the entire cell rather than just the characters. Notice as well that we've got a column here which we can hide or unhide for the information source. So we do have somewhere where for example the US gold price we know exactly where we got the information from so we can actually go back to it. And we've tried to be quite descriptive here. So it's not only is it US gold price, but in nominal terms, exchange rate in nominal terms. So as much as possible, we need to describe what these inputs relate to. Notice as well, even though we've got the description, we have also included a column to explain the metrics. So you can see it's US dollars per ounce, rand per US dollars, rands per ounce, etc. Not only that, in some cases we've even gone so far as to use custom formatting so that even though we type in the number 1350 what we see is in front of it US dollar per ounce so no one can come here and type in a number for example 1300 and click enter and legitimately say that they thought it was Rand per ounce it's very clear when you click enter you will see the metrics the units used but it will not be in your actual cell that is used in calculations and so all your calculations will work as normal. We also suggest you make use of the protect sheet option even if you don't want to use a password. The whole point of this is we've clearly shown where we expect inputs but it's very easy for a person to accidentally overwrite for example that one. So when we protect the sheet Notice it's been set up, so if I try and overwrite that with 10,000, we are immediately stopped. Another way we control the inputs is we actually specify what the input should be. So for example, if I click on this cell, which is the a darker blue, where we're telling the people that this is some sort of, it's controlled in some way, it's got a drop down. You can't just put any number in here, you have to choose one of those. If I go lower down here, You'll see we've got something here called dilution percentage and although it doesn't look like there's any controls over it if I type a nine percent no problem if I type eleven percent we get a warning message saying are you sure because it should normally be between these two numbers and all that does is just give the user a little bit more time just to decide if that is actually the correct number or perhaps what they actually meant was 1.1 instead of 11 Ooh. So you can see there we tried to type 1.1% and it gave us a warning so we actually need to put the percent in, in which case it then works.